So this is something that will be important for some of the sample exam questions. Um, we know, how does an electromagnetic wave propagate? Well, it could just propagate by feeding on itself, right? It can go, we saw that, um, this would be a good exam question. How can an electromagnetic wave uh, propagate through a vacuum? How is it possible for an electromagnetic wave to propagate in a vacuum? Because it seems like there's nothing to wave there. Well, we explained that previously. Can you have an electric field in a vacuum? Yeah. yeah, and you can have a magnetic field in a vacuum because remember we saw fields are not properties of objects, they're properties of space. Well, there's plenty of space in a vacuum. So in a vacuum, you can still have um, that wave in the electric and magnetic fields. And we just saw that once uh, the, the changing electric field induces the changing magnetic field. And the changing magnetic field induces the changing electric field, so they feed on themselves. So we know how they propagate, even in a vacuum. But how do they get started? Well, they get started by accelerated charges. Uh, we usually think of this like an, an oscillation of a molecular or uh, an oscillation of kind of a molecular uh, dipole type thing or atomic dipole uh, inside the substance. Okay, so. Now, let's think about how the waves propagate in material. We already saw how that they can propagate even in a vacuum because you can just have the waves feeding on each other. But let's say that now the wave gets into material, say it gets into, I don't know, glass. Because we know that light moves through glass. Ah, so yeah, another point. This oscillation of this dipole here, um, this is obviously, since this is a periodic motion, it has a certain frequency. So there's a certain frequency for this oscillation. And that's the frequency of the And that's the frequency of whom? Yeah, what, what part of the wave? That's the frequency that the electric fields are oscillating at, and the frequency that the magnetic fields are oscillating at. Remember, that, those are the things that are waving. The things that are waving inside the wave are the uh, electric and magnetic fields. Both of them are at the same frequency. And they're both at the same frequency. That's right. Well, that makes sense. Since the electric and magnetic fields are being generated by this oscillating charge, it makes sense that they would have the same frequency. Oh, so that's why the, the frequency is more fixed. That's right. That's why, in a sense, when you go to a new substance, the frequency doesn't change because it's ultimately derived from this ultimate accelerated charge over here. So here we have the wave. And I'm going to write the wave has the same frequency as the oscillation of the charge. The wave over here has the same frequency as the oscillation of the charge. Now, this wave also has a wavelength, of course. But this oscillating charge doesn't have a wavelength because it's not a wave, yeah. right? It makes sense to talk about the cycle, how many cycles it goes through per second, but this isn't really, this isn't a wave, so it doesn't have a wavelength. So in a sense, the frequency we talked about is more prior. It comes first. So if you know the frequency then, how would you find the wavelength? Um, it's related to the speed. Yeah, so how would you figure it out? Um, so if you have a frequency, it's, it's the wavelength times the frequency or is the speed. Yes, yeah, so you would start with this basic equation. So this is our this is a crucial equation you're pretty sure to need on the test. Frequency times wavelength is speed. So you just divide the speed by the frequency. That's right. So this would be a good test question uh, as well. Test to, to, um, they could give you the frequency that the charges are oscillating at and ask you for the wavelength of the wave. Well, you would say whatever this is oscillating at, that's also the frequency of the electric and magnetic fields. And then if you know the speed of the wave, you could plug in. Uh, if this, uh, I kind of guess we're assuming that we started in a vacuum here. So, it's just C. so here we would use C. Remember that C does not stand for the speed of light. It's only the speed of light in a vacuum. But when it's in a vacuum, we could use C. And that would give us uh, lambda here. So if we're going to make a little flow chart. In a, in a kind of logical sense, the frequency of the oscillation comes first. And that gives you the frequency of the wave. And those are equal to each other. And then that gives you the wavelength of the wave um, using V equals F times lambda. OK, now let's think about what happens when we move into this. So here we have a vacuum. And here we have a material medium, say glass. Now, how is the wave going to propagate inside of the glass? Well, I guess we could still say that it kind of just propagates with the, 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 e, the electric fields inducing the magnetic fields and vice versa. Uh, I guess it's still going to do that. I'm not sure. But now there's also, there is something to wave here now. There is now something to oscillate because there really is something here. So what's going to happen is remember that all, what we have here is we have a bunch of electric fields that are oscillating. 
Well, once the electric field hits the substance, the electric field is going to cause any of the molecular dipoles inside the substance to start oscillating. So here's a new molecular dipole inside the glass. And now it's going to start oscillating too, because um, the, elect the changing electric field is going to induce an oscillation. We know that electric fields can exert electric forces, and since the electric field is changing, it's going to be constantly uh, moving this dipole up and down. You were, you were saying? Um, so in the glass, if you like, if there is some type of ions in it, or right, or you know, just in general, um, there's separation of charges inside substances. Protons are separated from electrons. Um, or you could have uh, ionic bonds, or you could have polar covalent bonds with molecular uh, dipoles. So there's lots of little um, separations of charges uh -huh. um, that can oscillate inside of a substance. Um, and uh, again, they, um, something that could cause them to oscillate is a changing electric field. Okay, so when the changing electric field hits the substance, whatever molecular dipoles are there are going to start oscillating. It has to be, oh, because since the electric field is changing, that's why it oscillates, not just like, that's right. just like moves. You got it. That's right. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, they're not just going to shoot indefinitely in one direction. The electric field is constantly changing from up to down, so they're uh, uh, changing from pointing from one direction to another, so the oscillation, so the movement should change from one direction to another. Well, this gives us a new source of accelerated charges. Right now we have new accelerated charges, and this gives us another explanation for why the wave would keep propagating through the substance. We know that accelerated charges cause an EM wave. Obviously, everything we're explaining here is just for EM wave. We're not talking about sound waves or light waves. Uh, we're not, not talking about sound waves here or water waves. Uh, it's only EM waves that are caused by accelerated charges. All right, so now we have one explanation for how an EM wave propagates through a vacuum. It propagates in a vacuum by feeding on itself, the electric fields changing electric fields and these mag magnetic fields and the changing magnetic fields and electric. I guess, that I, I guess that would still hold inside a substance, but now we have another source, which is um, that the changing electric fields from this wave cause a new accelerated charge, a new uh, dipole to oscillate over here. So here we have a new oscillation, and now we get a new EM wave. Now, what do you think would be the frequency of oscillation of this dipole inside the glass? Does it say the frequency? Because it's coming. It's being caused by the oscillation of the electric fields over here, which were at that same frequency as before. So what would be the frequency of this new wave inside the glass? So the frequency that the molecular dipoles in the glass is oscillating at would be the same as the frequency of this new wave inside the glass, because remember the wave is being generated by these dipoles. So if the dipole is going back and forth at, uh, just to make up the number, 10 cycles per second, then you would expect the electric fields inside here to be oscillating at 10 cycles per second. This is the idea we talked about before, that when you move from one material to another, um, when, when a uh, EM wave moves from one material to another, does its frequency change? No. So this would be a good test question again. In fact, I think it was one of the sample exam questions to explain why the frequency of light doesn't change um, when you move from one substance to another. Uh, and you can see there's a whole chain of logic. Originally, the frequency was set by the original accelerated molecular dipole. That um, determined the frequency of the electric fields in the EM wave, which would be the same. And then that determines the frequency of oscillation of this new molecular dipole inside this new substance glass. And then that determines the same frequency for the new propagating EM wave inside that substance. OK. On the other hand, though, um, if this was a vacuum, what can we say about the speed of light in this glass? Is it going to be equal, bigger, or smaller to in the vacuum? Yeah, we just know from our previous knowledge that things slow down when they, turn, when they move into a material. So now, we know that the speed is smaller than it was in the vacuum. The speed of the, uh, the wave is smaller than it was in the vacuum. So what's the other consequence of that? Yeah, we can see from our uh, key equation here, if the speed is decreasing, but we just proved that the frequency is constant, then the wavelength has to get smaller. So speed and wavelength change when you move into a new medium. And again, we can use this whole flow chart thing here to explain that. Again, the, the, these dipoles here, they don't really have wavelengths. They only have frequencies. But the waves have frequencies and wavelengths. OK, uh, are we ready for the question?